said, don't we were going to lose Joe yesterday. It was close. When I got that phone call from Beningo. Oh, my God. The trains have shut down. What a disaster. <laughs> I'm stuck. I was like, I don't think I'm ever going to get him to fill in ever again. Bro, let me tell you right now. I, I found that. Look, it didn't take me long to realize why I don't do this anymore full time. <laughs> no, I really. So, yes, you can't make it up. So, I'm like, I'm in a good mood. I do the show with you. Yeah. Right. I'm walking. I got, you know, we get out early, the whole thing. I'm ready to, you know, I'm going to get home. Fine. No problem. I get to the pad train. It's the cops are outside. It's shut down. What do you <laughs> mean it's shut down? Oh, uh, there's some kind of issue with the track and this and that. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. So I said, well, can I go to the World Trade Center and get the whole bulking? No. Okay, great. <laughs> so now I got to figure out, well, what's my game plan now? So I start heading back to the station, right? And I wasn't thinking about it, you know, like I should have, like, a couple days. I mean, I could have, like, Dove pointed out to me, and I didn't even think about this. I could have took a subway to Penn Station and, you know, come, went in from Penn Station. To, Jersey Transit to Jersey style. Transit, yes. right. Yeah, I could have yeah, done yeah. that. All right, there would have been no issue there, but I wasn't thinking clearly at this point because I'm so, you know, I was aggravated. So I walk about four blocks, and I see this this uh, cab driver, older guy, right? Seemed like a nice guy. He's standing outside his cab smoking a cigarette, whatever he's doing. <laughs> I said, are you working? He goes, yeah. I said, let me ask you, you want to take me to Jersey? Because I'll take you to Jersey. I said, okay. So he get, and I was happy about this because he could have just hosed me for oh, like, yeah. I don't know. So he looks at his book. He goes, where do you want to go? So I didn't have him take me all the way home. Right. I had him take me uh, to Paramus at a diner in Paramus, suburban <laughs> diner. I call it Boobies, right? <laughs> and, you know, it'd be easy for my wife to come and pick me up. So, okay, fine. $120 with the tolls. Oh, jeez, man. For 120 with the tolls. I think you're lucky you had someone who was willing to drive you. Oh, I yeah, can't right. tell you how many times taxis will no, right. refuse right, to right. take me to a certain right. place. No, 100%, 100%. I mean, I, I was I was thrilled to see it. I oh, mean, you know. Man. So I said, all right, 120 bucks. I wasn't happy about it, but okay, fine. Bro, and, I, and that's when I called you when I got in the cab. <laughs> And you're telling me that you're at the GW Bridge. Dude, already. there was no traffic. There were, I, I never, okay, all the years that I did this, right, 25 years, the days when I used to drive in and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when I was doing SNY in the afternoon and leaving from there, and I, I never got home as fast as I did yesterday. That's the one positive. There like, was nobody this, on the road. This is the time of year, mid to late July, where nobody is in New York City. Oh, or at my least God. Very few people. Everybody's trying to take their vacations. They're working at home. So last night when I left, I got home in record time. And it's been like that the last couple of weeks. Like, the city just empties out. So if there's right, one positive, right. you got home earlier than you would have gotten home. I did get home, home early. You I, took that, the train. That was the good part. I mean, I, we were sailing, and I'm telling the cab driver, I can't believe it. I was, <laughs> you know, so that was the good. That was good. And, you know, then I'm, then I'm you know, I got on the train today. No problem. I get the patch trains okay. And, of course, the, the, the negative, though, is it's pouring out. I know. I mean, what a, you know, I used to, my favorite month was July. It was right. July. But this, we have, I cannot remember a worse July than we have had. I mean, we had two consecutive Sunday rainouts. Yep. Two yep. of them in a row. Yep. Complete washout days. Today, I don't know, I think the sun's now trying to come out again. Sun's coming out. Today's going to turn around. Is it? It's going to turn around. So like we're going to get a Met game tonight. We are going to, so unfortunately. watch the Mets lose to Lucas Giolito tonight. <laughs> I was going to say. Right? Unfortunately, there'll be a Met game tonight. But it is going to clear out. So but, anyway. yeah, it was raining this morning, man. So I was thinking, you know, now, obviously, tomorrow I'm with you. But then on the next two days, I'm alone. Right. right? Thursday and Friday. I was thinking about asking Spike. You think maybe I could do the shows from home? <laughs> Do I really have to come in? The one day, Thursday, I'm on until 7 o'clock. What? They're pushing what they bring, it, man. They want to give me a helicopter or what? <laughs> Luke Al is not here. I mean, it's unbelievable. And can I ask a question? Now, the G Emmanuel, right? Is that his first name? Do I have the right that name? That is my name. Okay. Listen, by the way, how multifaceted he is. He's a, here's a guy. Yeah. He's covering the Yankees. That's right. Okay? The Yankee post game. You should be in Anaheim, shouldn't you? Anyway, <laughs> right? You should be, but... He's covering the Yankees, and this guy's doing He's like a border. <laughs> he does everything. What are you kidding me? <laughs> he's a Swiss Army Is this knife. how you, like, supplement your salary? I mean, I... I <laughs> Basically, wherever they put me. I don't remember Sweeney having to do board hopping. <laughs> 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 right, Luke? I mean, come on. Oh, and well, I'll tell you this, Emmanuel. We needed you last night because last night... I sit down, spend some time with the wife, oh my God. spend some time with my kids, watch Monday Night Raw with my oldest, and then at 9.30, everybody falls asleep. It's like a beautiful magic trick. Everybody's asleep. I was like, what am I going to do with my night? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit down, fully focused, 
and watch the New York Yankees That's what you're gonna do? take on the Los okay. Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Right, whatever the name is. And it took three and a half hours. It was a very long game. Well, but it was extra innings as well. We had 10 innings. We had a million base runners. There were a combined 107 guys left on base. Is that true? No. <laughs> 107? I think the answer was 23, which, by the way, is that, pretty high. No, that's close to 107. There were 23 in the, in guys. In baseball parlance, whatever you want to say. The Yankees struck out, and this time I'm not kidding, 17 times in this game. And we were featured and we're handed like this magical managerial moment. This moment of what would you do? Mm. So I want to bring you back to the seventh inning. Yeah. And you can decide. And everybody By can decide. By the way, I was in and out of the game to let you know. Did you last though until uh, midnight? The last thing I remember is Otani hitting a double up the alley. And then for some reason, the angel third base coach yes. has this guy try to score from first. Yes. He was out by five miles. Yeah, that was the third inning, And then he got the hit in the head because <laughs> Trevino had his helmet on. Yes. And basically, you know, gives him a headbutt. Yes. As he's coming into the play. The kid, Zach Nato, got like bloodied, he and, he's, and he stayed in the game. Right, right. He's right, like a right. hockey player. Right, right. That was in the third inning of that game. Harrison right. Bader made a nice play. Volpe made the nice throw to the plate, and he was out by 100 miles. Yep. So in the seventh inning of this game, the Yankees have themselves a 3-1 to one lead. Credit to Luis Severino through a hell of a game. Mm-hmm. He wasn't dominant, but he made the big right, pitch when he needed to. It was a two. big comeback for him. What, Absolutely. What's been lately. He made the big pitch when he had to. Struck out Mickey Moniak with guys on base. Got Moniak out with the bases loaded. It was all fine. So he comes out after six innings. It's 3-1 to one Yankees. There is a runner on first and two outs. And the batter is Shohei Otani. Mm. Otani had singled. He had doubled, and he had been walked earlier in the fifth inning of this game. He's the tying run at the plate. And as Otani comes up, I think we're all thinking the same thing. Like, what do we do here? And honestly, I thought it was a good debate. Like, do I put mm-hmm. Otani on? Do I put the tying Who's run on Who's pitching at this point now for the Yankees? Michael King is now in this game. Michael King is in the game. Right, and now, they got two guys on. How one guy out? on. One on. There's a runner on first With how and many two out? outs. Two out. And the only the reason. Yankees are up two. They're up by two. And the guy who was on base was Eduardo Escobar, who Michael King somehow walked, which was a huge Eduardo, mistake. Our old buddy, Eduardo our old buddy. Escobar. Eduardo Escobar. So Otani's the tying run. There's two outs and a runner on first. If you walk Otani, the tying runs on first. The go-ahead runs at the mm-hmm. plate. Aaron Boone decides. And to Moniac let, is the next guy, right? And the next hitter is Mickey Moniac, right. who's hitting 326. He's had a very good year, 336. He's hit 10 home runs. He had a fine year. I want to point that out. So Aaron Boone decides, after a visit from the pitching coach, mm-hmm. Matt Blake, All right, well, you know what? We're going to let the kinger face Shohei Otani. What would you have done? Walked him. You would have, you oh, would have no done the bond street. Uh, of course. Oh, God. I'm not okay. pitching to this guy in that kind of spot. I, I, why would I do that? I mean, this guy, like you just said, he had a hit already. He had a double. He had a single. He had a double. The guy's the best hitter in baseball right now because Aaron Judge isn't playing. He's the best hitter in the game. Leads the league in home runs. He's got 70-something RBIs. Right. I'm not pitching to this guy. No, I get it. And I lean that way towards uh, as well. I don't care what Moniac is hitting. I'm not pitching to Otani. At the end of the day, he's still Mickey Moniac. Right. Okay? Right. He ain't Shohei Otani. Right. So I happen to agree with you. My thought was, you know, as unorthodox as this is, I can't let their Barry Bonds, who, by the way, before that at-bat, had 34 home runs. Right. He is on a pace, Joe, to break Aaron Judge's American League home run record. Well. That was set a year ago. Right. Right. So Aaron Boone obviously decides against it. Now, this is a split view. So, for example, on the radio side, I quickly flip over. I'm curious. Was what John doing the game? John and Susan are doing the game. Okay. One of them said, you can't walk Otani. The other one said, you got to walk Otani. Well, who said you can't? Who do you think? Susan. John Sterling said, you can't walk Otani. Oh, really? You can't do it. Oh. Susan, on the other hand, said, you got to walk Otani. Well, well, she's right. And Susan by the way, was 100% right. And I give Susan credit for this. So Shohei, of course, hits the home run yep. on a one-two pitch. Left center field. And it took Susan about 15 seconds to utter under her breath, my idea was better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, she, oh, it was under her breath? But it she wasn't. made sure you heard it, though, oh, right? Yeah. And by the way, I agree with her. Right. You agree with her? I agree with yeah, her. Right. I would not pitch to him in that spot. You got a two-run lead. You need to win. You know, right now the Yankees are in, you know, semi-free fall. I mean, let's be honest no, about it. No, let's just call it. It's free fall. It is right. Yeah. Especially right. when you look at who they're losing right. to. You know, they're at it. They're not. They're at a playoff. The playoff uh, situation right now, where they two games out, three games. 
Yeah, I mean, you, you've had a bad road trip already. You lost two out of three to Colorado. You can't mess with Otani. That's yeah. the key. Like, if Mike Trout is on deck, it's a different discussion. And I'm not trying to disrespect Mickey Moniak, no. who's had a fine year, but he's not Shohei Otani. So I was on your side. Susan was on your side. Here's what pissed me off about Aaron Boone. Because, again, I, mm-hmm. I think this is a debatable right, right. discussion. We happen to be on the same side, but I can understand the perspective of, you know what? It's the seventh inning. The worst he could do is tie the game. I don't want to bring the lead run to the plate. I'm going to go after him, and I'm going to be very careful with him. I get that side of things. What pissed me off about this manager was what happened after the game. I'm going to play you the clip. This is from the post game. You will hear the reporter, and I cannot tell which reporter it is. Mm -hmm. It should have been Emmanuel. He should have been out there. Well, there's no question. Do you do any, by the way, do you do any, any road trips at all? All the road games are studio. Oh, okay. So they're from here. So you, like, don't even go to, like, Boston, right? You know? I probably could ask. City I, Field I, I probably could. Mets? City Field we go to. City Field we do go to. <laughs> That's the exception. <laughs> <laughs> well, unbelievable. Anyway, all right. So here is the clip. Right. And you'll hear Boone's response. And his response is the thing that annoyed me. Here we go. You had walked Otani earlier in the game. Did you give any consideration to doing that with King at bat? No, no. No. Maybe if he had gotten to second base and fallen behind in the count or something, but uh, no, not not there. No, you didn't consider it. This wasn't one of those. No. Hey, I'm having a See, quick discussion. You don't even consider See, this idea that the first first and this is another thing too. And I never understood this. First base is open. What is it? What's the difference? Is there really a difference? It, the only. Tell me what the difference is. Okay, so here's is. the because difference. I, I, here's the for difference. For years, the, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm watching baseball since 1962. You know, it's 1961, whatever year. Okay. Right. Well, I don't get it. I, only, I still don't get it. So the difference in this case is if the guy's already on second base. I don't seem to care about putting the right, tying run on right. base, and I don't seem to care about putting the lead run at the plate. But I don't want to force him to second base, which is weird because in the fifth inning when he did walk him, there were runners on first and third. So when he walked so, Otani so in the fifth, so, he did move the guy to so second. So they had runners at first and third. He walked him intentionally? With two outs, yeah, yeah. It was a tie game. That was the only difference. It was a 0-0 game. So That's just right. because now he's got a two-run lead, he says, ah, let me be let me be smart and I'll pitch to him. Yes. Where's the logic, Joe? There's no logic. First of all, there's no, no logic. logic. And then second well, of all. Well, you saw, let me tell you, Aaron Boone, you are the luckiest guy in the world that George does not own the team anymore. <laughs> well, Cashman too. Well, well, both of them, yeah. But, but I mean, right now we're talking about the manager. But if Aaron Boone would have said, hey, look, it's a good question. And I debated it and I went back and forth and here's why. To me, we could still argue about the decision, but I'd move on from him saying no 15 times as if it's a dumb question. Right, as right. if we're all a bunch of schmucks for suggesting that you do essentially what you did two innings earlier and walk the best player on the planet. Right. A few right. questions later, I think this is Brian Hoke. Man, I know it's not Brian Hoke. It's uh, the guy who's got the same name as the uh, old Fox News reporter. What's his name? Who's the guy that's on Newsmax now? Eric Bolin. Oh, Eric Bowen. Yeah, he's on at 8 o'clock. There's a different Eric Bowen. Right. They're right. very different. He, used to play, he, he played baseball too, this guy. The Eric the, Bowen. The news reporter guy. Yes. Yes, he did. This guy's a reporter, okay. and he followed it back and said, hey, right. let me ask this again. Maybe Boone will give me a different answer. Let me try. Understanding you don't want to put a, a runner in scoring position there yeah. with an intentional walk, but does it at least cross your mind just because of the unique role that Otani is on right now? I think that made 19 home runs in his last 31 games. No, not that <laughs> I mean, look, I did it in about, yeah, talk about as a unique a spot, first and third, as you can. All right, you know what? Here's the problem. First of all, you're right. He gives you the uh, yeah. 80 second pause. Right. And then the no of disgust, like he didn't consider it. To me, this is a debatable managerial move. We could take calls on it all day. I'm open to the debate. I see both sides. I have to be honest with you. For this manager to act like it was never considered. I would never think about it is almost malpractice. Mm. You you didn't consider walking the best player on the planet. I, I would have clearly. I'm telling you, if it was if it was uh, watching uh, you know our team watching the Mets, I would have. 
and Buck did that, I'd be screaming, what are you doing? You can't pitch to this guy. <sighs> you can't pitch to him. That's and, a bad job by Boone. And, and look, you I'll, can't. I, I wouldn't even consider pitching to that guy. Well, but that's the thing. Like, if he would have gone that way and said, I can't face him, can't let him right. be, we'd all understand Of course. It. So my issue isn't even with his decision to face Otani. It's the idea that I didn't even consider yeah, terrible. walking him. Terrible. You didn't consider walking him when two innings earlier you did? You know, I'll walk him tonight if he's in the same situation. I don't know about that. Uh... Now, I, I want to be fair about this. So, Otani hits the game tying two-run yeah. home run. Yeah. Michael King puts the next three guys yeah. on base. Ron Mar- Marinaccio comes and gets a big out. So, the game remains tied. In the bottom of the ninth inning, with the game still tied, mm. 3-3, bottom of the ninth inning, Otani let off. And I'm watching this game live, and I'm talking to myself because everybody's sleeping. The pitcher is Nick Ramirez, and I said out loud because I want to be accurate about this, I have to walk Otani to lead off the ninth inning. Mm. I can't face him. I can't fight. Do you agree with that, by the way? Uh, I I am. I don't like leadoff walks. No, no one does. I, I, leadoff walks to me are almost automatic runs. Auto, so almost you would automatic. have faced Shohei Otani. Um, I probably would have been careful. I, I would have been. Here's probably what I would have done. It would have been the unintentional intentional. Okay. You know, I would oh, I would have said right, maybe maybe you'll swing at a bad pitch the, or something. Okay, the problem with that is because I just I, that's the one thing that I just don't like. Do not like the leadoff hit of walking. I am a I'm I think very, they score about seventy five percent. No, the time. they do. They score at a very high rate. I'm also afraid of the unintentional intentional walk because Michael King is ahead of Otani one and two, and in logic would say he's going to be careful. Oh, so he was one and, and he, two on him, and he wasn't careful because he blew a fastball right by him a pitch earlier and was up again with a fastball, and this time Shohei Otani didn't miss it. So you can say be careful. That doesn't mean the pitcher's going right, to execute. Right, 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 right. So, and by the way, I understand where you're coming from about not wanting to walk him. I'm just letting you know. Bottom of the ninth inning tie game. Here's where I'm at. I'm walking Shohei Otani. That's did he me. eventually walk? What did no, he, he struck out on three pitches. Oh, wow. I, I just want – the reason I bring this up is I think if we're being fair about this, we got to be consistent. Or we got to at least analyze each Otani situation. Yeah. In the ninth inning, no one's bringing this up today because he struck out. Right. I'm bringing it up because right. I'm being honest right. with you. I would have walked his ass. Yeah. I, see, I just don't like lead off. To me, a leadoff walk is like a death sentence. I, I really, that makes me crazy. But even facing a guy who's been on base yeah, four consecutive I, times and showing Tony, what's that? Uh, well, That's not I a death sentence? It is, but I, I still, it's a little It's a little different. It's a little different. Well, look, Boone didn't walk him. It was, it was never really asked about it. I mean, that's, you know. And he didn't only strike out by Nick Ramirez. He looked injured. I mean, he looked hurt when he struck out. Really? He was holding his back numerous times. So we'll see if he's been affected by it. Mm. But there were two situations, really three if you include the time they did intentionally walk him, where it was on the table. But this manager, who I have defended a lot, I think he's actually much maligned sometimes. But last night, I'm offended that Aaron Boone's offended that he's being asked a straightforward question about walking the best player on the planet, and he acts like it was not a consideration when it is malpractice for it not to be considered in that situation. He's Shohei Otani. He's the best player in the world right now. Yeah, there's no question. He is on a tear. He is on a stretch right now in which you can't get him out. You said 19 homers in his last 31 games? Yeah. And what, he's got 34 homers now? He's got 35 homers. 35. He has a chance. Forget the pitching. We're not even talking about no, the two ways. that. Stuff. Forget pitching. As no, an, no, just as a, a, a hitter. As an offensive player, he is matching what Aaron Judge did last mm. year. Now, the only difference is, and this is a big difference, but it's not Otani's fault, is that the Angels are a game under 500. Yeah, right. So despite everything he's doing offensively, as magical as it is, Judge was doing it, and he was carrying Will the Angels. Will they trade him? Will the Angels trade I still lean towards no, because I think Artie Moreno is one of the worst owners in baseball. Mm-hmm. And I don't trust him. I don't think he knows what the hell he's doing. So I assume he's going to do something stupid, and doing something stupid would be trading the guy who has no chance of coming back. Mm. With that said... There are other reasons why the New York Yankees lost the game to a team they can't lose to. They let Griffin Canning, who had a four and a half oh, ERA, strike he, he out was, 12 guys. I was guys. watching the game. The only guy that could hit him was Glaber. Well, Glaber and, got a couple hits. He's been red hot. The other guy was Oswald Peraza, who got on base every single time. And he I thought got that was the other. off by him. Once. Yeah, he made a bad base oh, running move in the God. first he was inning. He out by a mile. Too. He also stole a base in the seventh that essentially led to an insurance run before Otani hit the home run. Peraza was great. I mean, the guy got on base five times. He needs to play every single day. If Aaron mm-hmm. Boone decides yes. to sit yep. Oswald Peraza today, 
I think we're all going to lose our heads. Like, yeah, that would be a typical move. Like, well, you know, let's get him feeling confident. Let's get him out I after know, being I on base that's, five that's times. That's so ridiculous. But the issues around the Yankees, they're all over the place. First of all, Giancarlo Stan was 0 for 5. Mm. And while he just missed a home run in the ninth inning, that could have been a game winner, he also struck out three times, including one time with a runner in scoring position. Giancarlo Stanton needs to get hot. Anthony huh. Rizzo, I don't even know what else there is to say about this guy. It's amazing. He did hit. You know, when I was watching, he I thought he hit one. He actually hit one deep to right center field. He did. His first at bat. He did. That got caught at the warning track. But you know what, Joe? But how many games now? What, 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 how many How many at bats is it for this guy? It's 42 games. Yes, Network put the clip up last night. He's hitting about 155, 160 mm. during that stretch. And while you're right, he hit the ball hard in the first inning. I don't think any Yankee fan wants to hear anymore about Anthony Rizzo hitting the ball hard. No, Ooh. I don't know. I understand that. Anthony Rizzo swung 3-0 and and he just missed one. Or, and oh, he was Anthony... batting cleanup last night, too. Right. But Anthony Rizzo is a problem. Harrison Bader's cooled off. He's a problem. Isaiah Conifalefa got on base three times. I don't want to rip him. But Isaiah Conifalefa is not an everyday player. And yet he is playing every single day. The Yankees have major, major issues that can be helped, not fixed, by the return of Aaron Judge. And they need him back quick. Big time. Not that he's the magic elixir, but guess what? A year ago, when he was putting up those monster numbers, he sort of was the magic elixir. He was the guy who really made you forget about so many of the other issues that the Yankees had, and that's why he was the most valuable of MVPs. They need him. And Aaron Boone and the New York Yankees are giving no direct answer on when he's going to come back. And here's the other issue that's sneaking up on all of us. If I asked you two weeks ago, I would have said, hey, Joe, what's the strength of the New York Yankees? You probably would have said they're bullpen. Right. Well, it's not anymore. Right. right. Michael King has not been good for four appearances in a row. He hasn't. There's nobody in that bullpen, not a single guy, not Clay Holmes, not Wandy Peralta, not Ron Marinaccio. There is not a single guy that you really, really, really trust in a big spot. Everybody over the last week has taken turns on blowing big games. So the strength is no longer the strength. So what are the New York Yankees good at? I guess would be my question. What is it? What are they good at? They're certainly not good at their manager giving straightforward answers after games. They're not good at that. Like, what the heck are they? What's their strength? If Aaron Judge was there, I'd say, well, they have the most feared hitter in Major League Baseball this side of Otani. Their biggest strength is probably Garrett Cole, if you want to know. That's once every five days. No, I know, but you're asking me, so I'm I'm throwing that out there. And not only that. He's been great. And not only that, he has been great. Garrett Cole can only do so much right, right. because on Sunday, he was amazing. And he took him out after six. And I know he was, 100, was he 102 pitches. 102, 103, kind of in that range. Right, right. So, yeah, Garrett Cole's great. I, I mean, I agree with that. But what are they good at? Like, when you start to think about what they need to do in the next two weeks at the trade deadline, they have to do things, not one thing. No, they got to make a lot of moves. They really – what are they, two out of the wild card now? Well, right now they're three back in the loss column. Three out of – three in the loss column. Boy, they really are. And they're not sinking fast. Well. Yeah. Five games off. What, 50 and 45 is the record? And they're under 500 by six games when Aaron Judge doesn't play. Wow. And I had thought for a while that, hey, they are a 500 team without Aaron Judge. And if they can play 500 mm-hmm. ball mm-hmm. until early August and they get Aaron Judge back, they'll be okay. The problem is they're not playing 500 ball anymore. They're losing to bad teams. The Angels are not a good team, mm-hmm. especially Colorado. when you take Trout out of that lineup. The Rockies are not a good team. Cubs? The Cubs are average. Yeah, yeah. The Cardinals are not a good nope, team. Nope. And what they're doing right now, not to the extent of the Mets, obviously, but they're creating a hole. They are three games back. Actually, I, I think it's four games back now of the lost column spot for an American League wild card spot. They're creating this hole that's going to be very difficult to get out of. And no one's telling us that Aaron Judge is walking through that door anytime soon. They haven't said anything about no, that. No, you don't hear nothing about him. And Last I heard, he was actually hitting. Is he still hitting? He's taking batting practice. He is. That's great. He needs to run. Right. He needs to go do a rehab assignment. Like, there's a process here. And on July 18th, the clock is ticking. I said a month ago, they need him back by July 28th. And That's here's the, the line other of thing demarcation. Too, Judge, if he does come back, when he does come back, mm-hmm. you know, is he Aaron Judge right away? I they, mean, yeah, you got to worry about that, too. And, and they need him to be. Of course. They need them to Of course be. they, of course. I looked at July 28th as significant because that's when the schedule stiffens. They play the Orioles. They play uh, Tampa Bay. They mm-hmm. play the Astros. Mm-hmm. But they haven't even been able to take advantage of this part of the schedule where they aren't facing good teams. So it's July 18th. It is panic time. I mean, I, I hate to say it, 
Like, I know we like to say it's a long season. You got to wait. Of course, it's panic time. They're creating a bigger hole in the American League. Anthony Rizzo is showing absolutely no pulse of turning anything around. How could it be this bad? I understand, you know, when he got, you know, ran into whatever happened to him at first base. Now, that's a long time ago. And I, maybe you could trace it right to that. Mm-hmm. But what's going on? I mean, bro, that's it, it's mind-boggling to me that this guy has not hit a home run in over two months. It makes you very worried that either Something's he wrong. is hurt, like you said, even though they deny it, or he's just lost it. You know, sometimes guys lose it because guys slump. That's normal. But to go through a quarter of a season and be this bad, you start to worry. Like, is it ever going to turn around? And for the Yankees to survive without Aaron Judge, you needed guys to step up. And Anthony Rizzo is towards the top of that list, and he hasn't. Giancarlo Stand is towards the top of the list. Mm-hmm. And he got very unlucky last night. He almost hit a game-winning home run, but guess what? He didn't. Right. And at the end of right. the day, you got to produce. He hasn't. They haven't. The bullpen has been very mediocre recently. Unfortunately, the Yankees are playing like a bad team. And it's got to turn quick. Because if it doesn't, that three-game hole in the wild card spot could turn to a five-game hole, could turn to a seven-game hole. Ask the Mets. Those holes can start to just develop mm-hmm. quicker than mm-hmm. you realize. Mm-hmm. And it's happening before losing, our eyes. Losing becomes contagious. Yes. You know? It really does. It's like winning. It becomes contagious. Now, they got to figure out a way to start it tonight. And we'll see if Aaron Boone makes the right call and has Oswald Peraz in the lineup again. Because <laughs> after getting on base five times, that would be the Who's typical. Who's tonight? Herman tonight? Uh, tonight is. Who is pitching is. tonight? Domingo Herman. Emmanuel's Herman. giving me the yes. And they got Domingo Herman tonight. There you right. go. Against Patrick Sandoval, a lefty. You- and then they got Carlos Redon to wrap it up tomorrow. So, Emmanuel, let me ask you this question, if you don't mind. All right? Time. <laughs> So you're doing this today, right? Doing our show till one, you know, six fifteen, whatever it is, right? And then do you have to stay here for three hours and then do the Yankee game? I'm not on post game for this series. This weekend I am, so I go home after this. Oh, you do, right? Okay. And where are they this weekend? They're home this weekend. They're home right. against Casey this weekend. Right. Now, are you there? Will you be at Yankee Stadium? I'll be at the stadium. You will be. Okay, right. that's good. Uh, good. No, I just I'm just checking. I, I mean, I, you know, what do I? I'm only a part time guy here. I mean, you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't work here full time. Is your anymore. schedule directly affected by if John works or not? Is that when you do post games? Sometimes it's affected by if John's there, and then Justin Shackle yes. sometimes will fill in for Meredith on by the, TV. By the way, I, I don't was know him. Stunned when I heard that John Sterling was doing well, these is games. Is Justin in the guy that was on with Jack Curry the other day on a post game show? Yeah, he was doing yes over the okay. weekend. That's okay. why I did the Colorado okay. series. I right. see. I, I can't okay. believe John went to Anaheim. Like, I was just yeah, surprised, I was surprised by that. Yeah, he too. picked this West Coast trip. He yeah, wanted Michael to go out there. out there, too. I mean, I know. I know he wasn't in Colorado. They skipped Denver, right? but Anaheim, not even Michael LA. Michael K and David Cohn out there. Like, let's keep this in mind, and you and I know this very well. Just because they call them the uh, Los Angeles oh, yeah, Angels. Yeah, it's nowhere near LA. It's nowhere near and it's LA. No, and it's not LA. It's not. It's like a two hour drive, right? Yes. When we drove down, it would take two hours. We, we were you sitting remember in about that drive going massive down there. traffic, yes. You know, and all I remember is Giannotti complaining, right? <laughs> Didn't he complain for like the whole two hour ride down there? I remember what he was complaining about. I would rather not talk about what he was complaining about. Oh, you got to remind me. I'm not doing it on air. You have to, no, I'm not saying that. You got to remind me off the air what he was talking about. Yes, I'll remind you. Thank you. <laughs> but yes, it's a long ass trip, man. It is not 20 minutes away. No. It's not like when the Giants and Jets are called New York and they play in New Jersey. Right. It's across the river. Yeah. And look, sometimes you have right. a lot of traffic. It's, it could take a while. It's nine miles. You know, it takes about an hour and a half. Sometimes. But... <laughs> yeah. Take mass transit, it could take right. 15 not minutes. Not yesterday. Anaheim is another planet. Like, it is not close to Los Angeles. No. So, Artie Moreno likes to fool everybody. Orange with, hey, County, right? It's Orange County. Is it? A, yeah, Orange County. I, yes. OC was a hell of a show, by the way. Oh, yeah? Was, big fan you, of that show. You big, well, you're into all those kind of, you know. <laughs> yes. You can say those kind of TV popper shows. shows. Yeah, well, <laughs> pretty much. You know, I'm sure there was attractive women on it. Ah, yes. Well, there oh, you yes. go. So. 